COVID-19 cases are rising again, and we are seeing the highest number of infections since the pandemic began. And now that more of us are getting vaccinated, we want to talk about how they work. How can we be protected against the new variant? When are booster shots needed? And why we should not let our guards down? I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Since the first outbreak of the coronavirus in 2019, experts were working tirelessly to come up with vaccines to combat it. And each of them went through rigorous testing to ensure their quality, safety, and efficacy. Today, there are nine COVID-19 vaccines approved for use in the country. Let's welcome our guests for today. With us is Dr. Mark Edsel Ayes. He's the Clinical Genomics Laboratory Head at the Philippine Genome Center. We're also joined by Dr. Adrian Buensolido. He's the chairman of the Infection Prevention and Control Committee of the Asian Hospital and Medical Center. I'll start first with Dr. Adrian. We often hear of efficacy numbers, but what do they actually mean? Efficacy just means how good a vaccine is at preventing disease. For example, in COVID, uh, all our uniformly, all our vaccines are very good or efficacious no? um, at preventing severe and critical disease. So I'd like to ask Dr. Ed, uh, in general, the higher the efficacy rate, uh, the better a vaccine is. But is that still true? Does that still hold true with all the variants that are here today? Efficacy, as Dr. Buenzalito mentioned, that's what you see in the clinical trials. And clinical trials are designed in such a way that you eliminate biases or yung mga tinatawag na uh, observations that can actually cloud your judgment, yung can make your conclusion a bit wrong. So in clinical trials, you have very selected populations. And when you say 95% efficacious, that just means that in that population you observed, you were able to lower the incidence of the disease that you're trying to prevent by as much as 95%. What is basically the difference between efficacy rates and effectiveness of a vaccine? Efficacy is what we do in the trials. So that's sort of like the uh, kumbaga before your, your, your pre-test, no? bago na lahat. Kasi syempre, Gusto mo, bago mo i, i, ano, isubok yung ano, dapat tested na. Effectiveness is now what's the going on no? in real life, yung practical application basically. So that will be, usually it's a bit lower than the efficacy as seen in, um, in clinical trials. The World Health Organization recommends at least an efficacy of 50% before it can be deployed in populations. And uh, for this reason, all of the current vaccines, they're well above the 50% uh, recommended. And as far as the current data shows, they're performing very well naman at preventing severe disease. Let's talk about how these numbers are affected by the more aggressive Delta variant. Why are we having this sort of situation right now in our country when a lot of people are getting vaccinated and such, but we're still seeing high numbers of infective, uh, infectiveness, hospitalization, and everything. Why is that happening? Now you might wonder, hey, we're getting vaccinated. Unfortunately, it is a, this outbreak is occurring at the same time that we are trying to vaccinate our populations. So, you know, it's very tempting to make that conclusion na we're vaccinating, pero ang dami pa rin, ano, ang dami pa rin nahahawa. But you have to put it into context when the Delta variant started uh, entering and there were many cases being detected, we had only just breached 10% of our population that had been fully vaccinated. So to blame um, the, the infections on vaccines that are not working is actually missing the point. We have still to vaccinate a large number of people in order for it to, to see the effects of it protecting the people. Dr. Adrian, paliwanag natin ito na mabuti. Bakit hindi effective kapag isang dose lang at dapat kumplituhin? Ang bakuna kasi it really is really just a, it trains our immune system. It, it allows our soldiers no, to recognize the virus before the body even, even uh, you know, is encountering the virus. No? So that when it finally encounters, hopefully not, no, but finally when it encounters uh, the virus no, in, the, in real life, the soldiers will be able to recognize the virus and attack it early on and hopefully prevent a disease from, from happening or, or from occurring. 
So why is the second dose administered almost uh, at sometimes a month, sometimes even longer after the first one is given? What can you say to those people? Um, how can we encourage them to complete those doses? We really just have to tell people that one dose is not enough. No? We have to understand that you know, the design of these vaccines is you get the maximum protection from it if you get the two doses. Dr. Adrian, how about the side effects? How about uh, a lot of people are worried they don't want to get the vaccine because of the side effects? All of the vaccines are actually pretty safe, no? And if there's one number, let's let's say, let's really all of them are less than 1% in terms of having serious um, bad effects, serious adverse effects, no? Of course, we have to differentiate yung adverse effects from reactogenicity symptoms. We mentioned training. When the soldiers in our body, our immune system, starts training, right? many times we might feel them starting to train. No? Siyempre, gumagalaw yan. Ang mga sundalo, pag natisimula mag-training, gumagalaw. And therefore, there are reactogenicity symptoms, which are expected symptoms. Yung mga talagang alam natin na talagang pwede talagang mangyari, pero hindi masama. No? And what are these? Fever, pain, no? weakness. No? So sometimes a little bit of chills, no? uh, so body aches. No? These are just um, you know, symptoms that are telling us, we, our immune system, it's now working, it's now training for the battle later on. No COVID-19 vaccine offers perfect protection, but they're effective in preventing severe COVID and even death. When we return, we'll talk more about how antibodies work. Stay with us here on MedTalk Health Talk. You're watching CNN Philippines. The COVID-19 vaccines are a safe and effective way to protect against the virus. They work by allowing our immune system to produce antibodies to fight future infections. And while they each use different technologies to do this, they aim to achieve the same goal, which is basically to end the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk. We're your partner in healthcare. Is Antibodies, the, the be-all and end-all when it comes to fighting COVID-19? Or are there other factors in someone's immune system that can contribute to the fight? A lot of people are hearing about antibodies, no? And uh, they, they tend to, and you might have seen studies where they say, oh, the antibodies have gone down in this vaccine. It's not as effective. No, not necessarily. Um, your immune system is smart in that it also has a lot of other factors, a lot of other players. Um, antibodies, I like to call them like your missiles or your drones, because they can do things from afar. No, they don't. You, 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 they're they're created by what's called your your plasma cells, and then they'll fire it, and then if it finds the enemy, it will literally. See, search and destroy. Now that, that's a, the idea of how antibodies work. But there are other methods. And even if you know, if you like your military um, analogies, hindi lang nananalo yung guerra sa mga drone lang. So you also have ground troops. And we call these T cells. No, um, There are many different types of T cells, but some of them are designed to be able to know the enemy, which is also something that your immune system can do thanks to the vaccines. What would, what would a, a, a practical way uh, to, to advise our viewers when it comes to trusting the vaccine was effective when they were given to them? I would say you would know a vaccine is effective if one, you don't get sick. <laughs> and number two, if you do get sick, that it's not that severe. You don't end up having to go to the hospital. These vaccines are, they are very sophisticated. They're, they're manufactured in very stringent um, uh, uh, setups that it's not hindi yung basta basta. So they have to pass through a lot of uh, safety net. And that's the reason why they, ano, eh, they, it takes quite a while to, um, to have them approved, no? But um, as far as all of the vaccines that have been approved for use for emergency use authorization, they have met all of these requirements. So I would say that uh, people would really have to trust in our health agencies and also the WHO and the CDC for their guidance with regard to uh, the safety and efficacy of these vaccines. If you are fully vaccinated that, and you do get COVID-19, 
your symptoms would be shortened or you may not even feel symptoms at all. That's why a lot of people now think that those who are fully vaccinated and get infected, are they still as contagious? Are, 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 are they still as infectious as someone who has not been vaccinated? Dr. Adrian, can you answer that one? If you get vaccinated, don't think that you're already uh, uh, invulnerable, right? that you won't be hit by COVID already. At this time, especially with a Delta variant that is more infectious uh, than the original virus, um, we still need to maintain our masks, our face shields, you know, our hand hygiene, everything. You know? So we can still get coronavirus. But, and therefore, when we, still, when we get symptoms, you know, it, that we, we can't say that this is not COVID. We should still uh, you know, suspect and check. And th because if we don't, we might uh, you know, transmit, if in fact we got COVID, we can still transmit it to, to our family members, our office mates. If someone is fully vaccinated, do we already know the length of time that these antibodies for COVID-19 are effective or remain in the body? What I'm trying to drive at is here is the need for boosters, which a lot of people are talking about. Could you answer this one, Dr. Adrian? You have to remember that the vaccines have been there for around one and a half years or, or around a year. So this is the data that we have, that the, the, the vaccines, no, uh, we, uh, we've known them, no, and we are continuing to collect data for around a year or so. No? Now, there are studies that have shown that the antibody levels have indeed uh, been going down in some vaccines for around six, six months, four months in some. No? But like was mentioned earlier, it doesn't mean that your antibody levels, just because they are going down, means that the vaccine is totally losing uh, its efficacy. In fact, the studies that have uh, been coming out show that, that despite the Delta variant, despite the, the slight waning no, yung pagbagsak ng konti, ng antibody levels, magaling pa rin yung mga, yung mga, yung mga vaccine from preventing severe and critical illness. My question is, is herd immunity still uh, relevant? It's still relevant today. Is that still something that we are looking to achieve? And if it, it still is, uh, initially it was 70%, is that still the number we need to achieve until now, Dr. Ed? In the context of uh, protecting those people who cannot get the vaccine right now. So we're talking about younger populations where the studies that are looking about the safety profile uh, and the dosage needed is still ongoing. And also those people who have reduced immunity, either because they have a condition that, you know, they cannot receive vaccines because their body can't produce the antibodies so, uh, or cancer patients. So there are populations that will need herd immunity in order to be protected. And that's why it's still relevant. The Delta variant is the most contagious and transmissible variant to date, but there are other new variants such as the Mu variant, which is just around the corner. So, can additional boosters help protect us from these new variants? We'll tell you more after a short break. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health, so stay with us on CNN Philippines. Today, the Delta variant is the dominant strain in the Philippines, and it is also now affecting many parts of the world. But as with many viruses, we still need to keep our guards up because we keep seeing new variants come into play. So how about boosters for these new ones? I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk, where your health comes first. Is the vaccine that was given to us designed around the original original variant of, uh, of COVID-19? Are those still going to be effective with new variants down the road? Right now, we're seeing that with the Delta variant, you know, the, the original, of course, the, the vaccines that we have now were designed to, to prevent the original SARS-CoV-2. No? We're seeing that they're, that they're still very good at preventing severe and critical disease. You know? However, we have to go back to the original. No? The original SARS-CoV-2 is, is like a robber. No? Parang magnanakaw, no? So it just wants to, you know, to, to uh, rob houses. No? 
the, the original uh, SARS movie was, act was actually very good at robbing three houses. No? So usually one person infects one virus. Uh, one person usually infects three people. No? But because of the Delta, kumbaga parang naging mas magaling yung, yung, uh, yung magnanakaw. Instead of three, it can now uh, rob six houses. No? So as time goes on, ganun ng viruses. Eh. And, uh, you know, but some viruses are, are change faster than others. Fortunately, sa, sa SARS-CoV, hindi, ma, hindi masyado, not as fast uh, as others, no? pero not as slow as others then. We're seeing now the Delta variant, which is a variant of concern. And now there's this new variant, which was initially seen last January, which was a virus of interest. Is this another Delta just waiting to happen or something even worse? As with any variant, no, this is a result of mutation. And, you know, uh, the reason why you call it a variant of interest is because the mutations in its genome occur in areas that have clinical consequences, no? Like, for example, in the Delta variant, the reason why it is a variant of concern is because it has a mutation in one of its areas, which makes it very good at entering the cells, no? And you also have, for example, I'm not sure if people remember, but the beta variant, we used to call that the, we used to call that the South African variant, no? That one has a mutation in its spike protein, which is the one, that's the protein that's, that connects to our cells, no? In order to uh, infect. And it's also the, the portion that the, our antibodies uh, attach to. So because it mutated in that area, no, the antibodies might not latch as well. Yun ang sinasabi ni Dr. Gwen Salido na nag-iba yung itsura. No? So it's like your, your, your soldiers sinabi, oh, yung tao no, may bigote. And then nawala yung bigote ng tao. So iisipin, siya pa rin ba? Things like that, right? Would boosters be a good argument uh, for this uh, or the need to take a booster shot? A good argument for this. The basis of whether or not you'd consider a booster is more on the signal. When you look at the effect effectiveness, and that's why we follow up people, we follow up the populations who have been vaccinated to see whether or not there seems to be a decrease in the effectiveness. Um, uh, for example, in, uh, I, some people have brought it to my attention because they're, they're wondering, like the CDC is already recommending booster shots in certain populations. And this is what we mean because they're seeing the signals that the effectiveness of the vaccine is starting to decrease in those particular populations. So we're talking about people who have immune deficiency issues or taking medications that can interfere. So dun palang, they're seeing that the signal is dropping. But as far as the, the, regular, uh, the regular me and you, the normal population is concerned, it looks like the vaccines are still effective. So until they see those early signs, those early signals that the effectiveness is starting to wane, Chaka na lang natin pag-iisipan na baka we need a booster. No? But for now, it appears to be it's still working. When we say booster, are we referring to the same brand of vaccine that was initially taken? Or are we talking about uh, a, a different brand, uh, uh, changing to a different type of vaccine as a booster? Traditionally, of course, it, it would be the same one. But uh, understandably, because of the logistics involved and the worldwide demand, um, mixing became a, a question that was raised. Right now, um, the, there are safety studies that show that there does not seem to be harm mixing, meaning you, you're not expecting any adverse events or anything bad happening. But the efficacy of mixing is the one that's still being looked into. We hope we're able to answer your many questions about COVID-19 vaccines. We'd like to thank our guest, Clinical Genomics Lab Head, Dr. Mark Edsel, IS, and Infectious Disease Specialist, Dr. Adrian Buensalido. Maraming salamat sa inyong expertise at tulong. Get vaccinated, don't hesitate, don't be afraid. The COVID-19 vaccines are safe and they have been thoroughly tested. And these vaccines will save lives. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and we'll see you again next time. Stay safe, everyone.